Eric Swenson. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon podiatrist here at Thibodeau Regional Health System. And my clinic's located over at the Foot and Ankle Center. I specialize in all foot and ankle conditions. However, today I'm going to be talking about bunion deformities. Now, bunion deformities are the most common foot deformity that I see in clinic. Um, typically, they're described as a large bump on the side of the toe that causes the great toe to move over and push against the second toe. Um, it's a progressive deformity in nature, so over time what we see is the severity of the bunion increases. I've even seen some pretty severe bunions that were never fixed to where the toe makes about a 90 degree angle at the joint. Um, typically, patients will start to experience pain at later stages in life. However, that's not always the case. There are some times when younger patients with bunions also have pain to the area. Now, bunions are caused from an inherited bony structure of the foot. So you thank your parents or grandparents for the bunions. Now, tight-fitting shoes aren't the cause of bunions. However, they can contribute to the progression of the deformity. Now, typically, patients will experience painful symptoms involving that great toe joint, and they'll describe it as a burning type of achy pain. Typically, they'll have a lot of redness and swelling of the joint that's worse with tight-fitting shoes and with increased activity. Now, there's two methods of thought when it comes to how to treat bunions. What can we do to help manage symptoms? And what can we do to fix the deformity? Now, conservative treatment measures involve appropriate shoe gear that have a wide toe box to help accommodate the bunion deformity, as well as to help prevent excess pressure and irritation to the bump. Other than that, there's also a bunch of bunion pads and splinting options available to help provide cushion support to the bump, as well as to help try to straighten out the toe when you're wearing shoes. Other conservative treatment involves topical anti-inflammatories, decreasing activity level, and ice in the area. Now, when is it time to consider surgery? Well, typically, when patients have failed conservative treatment, when they're not able to wear the shoes that they want or need to wear on a daily basis without pain, when they're not able to perform the desired level of activity due to the pain, or when the great toe starts to creep under that second toe, that's typically when I tell patients, you know, we need to start discussing surgical treatment options. Now there's many different factors that come into play when deciding what's the appropriate procedure to address the bunion. There's many different foot types out there and not all bunions are created equal. So a lot of factors have to be considered involving what's the patient's age? What's their activity like? How severe is this bunion? Is there any arthritis involved? Is there any joint instability or hypomobility of the joints? And their overall foot structure. Depending on the patient, some bunions can even be fixed utilizing minimally invasive surgical techniques where we fix the bunion using small incisions so patients have less scarring afterwards. Now if you have any questions about your bunion or any foot and ankle condition for that matter, please feel free to give us a call over at the Foot and Ankle Center 985-493-4990.